Hey there stencil fans and welcome to another informative video. Today we're going to talk about the different kinds of supplies we have. I know we just talked about what is a stencil and how to take care of your stencils, but today we're actually going to talk about all the other things that we're going to be using in our projects. Now, besides your stencils, we do have one very important thing that we need for all of our projects, and that would be our blue painter's tape. And this tape is really great because it's called low-tack tape. It's actually great for a delicate project, and it will just come off on your stencils and your walls. It won't leave any residue behind, and it won't damage your walls or your stencils. Next up, let's talk stencil brushes. So why do I need to get some separate brushes for stenciling, right? Well, as you guys can see here, these stencil brushes look totally different than paint brushes. And that's because we plan on using them going up and down in motion, not side to side how a paintbrush is usually made. Another very common way of applying paint to our stencils would be our foam roller. We want to get this high density foam roller because it's going to apply our paint evenly and distribute it very nicely when working with stencils. Later in this course, we'll go over different ways of finishing off and making your stencils shine. And we're going to be using some fun different type of techniques and we're going to be using some sponges. And these sponges, as you guys can see, it's two very different ones. This one kind of looks like a brain or a coral. That's really cool. And this one is definitely more soft and almost reminds me of like the kind of sponges you use in the kitchen. And we're going to find out later on, like I said, the difference between using this one and this one and what kind of different type of techniques and styles we're going to get when we use them with a stencil. Okay, so this isn't the prettiest of supplies. And as you guys can see, I really have been using this for a lot of my projects already but it's really useful. As long as you have some kind of container to put your paint in and roll on your foam roller, this is what you'll need. Next up, I wanted to show you guys the different stencils that I will be using. This one is a cardboard stencil and some of the stars I started to pop out and the other ones are not popped out. And it's really simple. I just apply very little pressure and I just take out the stencil and it's not going to harm if I just take my time. I have a lot more stars to go, but I want to let you guys know that this is totally able to be used for stenciling projects. However, when you start to apply paint, paint is wet and this cardboard will start to warp. So if you want to use cardboard, that's fine and you're totally welcome to. Just know that this may be a one or two use, if you're lucky, type of thing. Sometimes when you get stencils, you notice that they come in a very long piece of plastic, right? And I didn't know when I first started out that I, I, you can cut the stencils. I know that sounds like a no-brainer, but you totally can. As you guys can see, I've already cut this out of a bigger shape, and it makes it so much easier to put it on you know, a pillow or something small. You don't have to take this big sheet out. Do what you want. And also, this one is really fun because as you guys can see, it is a pattern. And this one is great because it included some guidelines. So when you want to repeat this pattern, you know exactly where your stencil is going to line up. And that's really important to making a beautiful repeating pattern stencil. So it's really fun to see that on these kinds of newer stencils. But of course, if you don't have that, you can still line up your stencils just fine. It's just a little bit more work. Next up for your supply list, let's talk about paint. For every type of project, there's a different kind of paint that's going to be a companion for that. Wallpaper is just such a mess. So why wouldn't you want to look into different kinds of options that are easy to clean up and paint over? So, you know, of course, stenciling is a great option for that. But I do really want to recommend using flat interior paint. And the reason why we use flat interior paint is because it's going to be really beautiful on your stencil. And sometimes if you get a really high gloss paint, it's very easy to go underneath the stencil and make it really bleed and it's just not going to be as crisp as you like. The next most common craft when working with stencils, I would say, would probably be working on wood. Maybe unfinished wood or furniture of some kind. And of course for those furniture projects, you do also want to use furniture paint. Also for like a fun project, let's say you're doing a palette and you want, just want to have something fun on the walls. It's not something you're going to be eating off of. Of course, why not try different types of paint? I really would recommend using acrylic paint. It's going to be really fun and go on great. And as long as you're not eating off of it, it's going to be just fine. Chalkboard paint is also a great option for all the things we've already talked about. Fabric and wood work great with chalkboard paint. So another very common stenciling project would be stenciling on fabric. And of course, we want to use fabric paint. 
And that's really wonderful and you know it's great when you're doing washing because it doesn't come off. However, I do also want to recommend that chalkboard paint is another great thing if you're doing a big couch or another huge fabric that happens to be furniture. The next one I'm going to talk about is stenciling on glass. And stenciling on glass is kind of a tricky thing because most of the people think like, oh, stenciling on glass, you must be like, you know, drinking glass or some kind of food product. And of course, we don't want to put any type of paint on there because it's going to come off in the dishwasher or it might come off when you're eating it on it and that's just a huge mess. So I would only recommend using paint on things that are just display when you're working with glass material. And I would recommend if, for example, if you're stenciling on a mirror or perhaps a, or perhaps a door, um, you can go ahead and use any type of material you'd like because no one will be eating off of that. Well, at least I would hope not. So go ahead and think about using spray paint or acrylic paint on furniture items that happen to have glass or a mirrored surface. For anything else, remember, I think that the way to go would probably not be using paint at all. If you want to stencil with glass, think about etching. Okay guys, that's about it for my little tips and tricks on the most popular paints for projects. Next up, I want to talk about different types of paper. And there, I know that there's a lot of scrapbookers out there. In fact, I happen to be a scrapbooker too. So I use a lot of stencils for my projects. And it's really important to remember that when you're working with paint and paper, of course things are gonna get a little bit warped. So I would recommend using a hard card stock when I'm working with stenciling. And of course remember to use a very minimal paint and that's how you're gonna keep your stencil looking crisp. Now, let's say you wanted to get a little bit artsy and use, I don't know, watercolor. You are totally welcome to use watercolor on your stencils. However, it will bleed a little bit. So think about what you, the effect you're kind of going for I think that stenciling bleeding can be a really beautiful thing, but it's really all about the technique that you want to go for. If you want something more crisp, remember to use a thick paper and minimal paint. And if you want something a little bit more creative and artsy, you can use any type of paper, but just know that stenciling is going to bleed when you add a little bit more water to it. But also, did you guys know that there's actually stencil paint out there? I didn't know about that. And I actually just got some and it's really fun to play around with. And you can buy them online. Amazon is a really great option. And in fact, there's a really awesome brand called Folk Art Paints. And they have a wonderful array of stencil paints that are perfect for pretty much any project. You can also use ink. It's really simple and it's just like, you know, making stamps and all that fun stuff. You would just take a sponge, pop it into your ink pad, and then dab it onto your stencil. And you're gonna get a really, really soft, almost antique type of look. And it's gonna have crisp edges too. I don't know about you guys, but where I live, street art is a huge thing. If you, you can't even walk down the street without seeing some type of mural or a new Banksy piece that popped up overnight. What these artists do is they use stencils, homemade, and they use spray paint for on the go and, you know, avoiding those coppers as quick as they can. So I also wanted to talk about using spray paint with your stenciling. We're not going to do too much here with stenciling and spray paint just because we have so much to cover, but we will be using it from time to time. And spray paint is a great option for, of course, getting a stencil done quick. But I just wanted to let you guys know that the farther away that you have your stencil, that's where you're gonna get your crisp line. The closer up, your line is gonna get blurry. However, I wouldn't recommend breaking the law and doing street art around your area. Okay guys, I know we had a lot of information in this video and I promise I only have a couple more things before we get started. Okay, so when we're working with any type of material, including wood, glass, or walls, let's make sure to clean our surfaces before we get started. When you stencil on a dirty surface, it's really gonna show. So make sure you take the extra time to clean all the surfaces, and then you're ready to start stenciling. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me on my little informational tips and tricks of all the stenciling supplies. And I know you guys are totally educated now to start stenciling. And you know we have another fun project coming up, so let's get started. And this is gonna be one of our first big projects that I know a lot of you guys want to learn how to do, and that's stenciling on fabric. 